Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, welcome to Back to the Frame Rates Movie Musings bonus show where we share what we've been watching, what we're doing, anything that's Related to our movie, TV, watching experiences, where we just kind of hobnob around and talk about what's going on in our life. We're going to just see what's going on. How's everybody doing? Great. How are you? Uh, Dandy. I can't complain. I'm like one of the most impatient people in the world, so I have some like technical problems, but as soon as I solve them tomorrow, I'll relax. But until then, I can't relax. It's just my personality. But I, I'm no right to complain. I'm, I have... Oxygen. I live in the United States. I have a roof. Life is good. Sam, do you want? Do you want to? You don't have to do this, but do you want to tell us what happened to you tonight? Oh, it's yeah. I'll just in my frigging vehicle. <laughs> there was a woman that was. I was driving. I like live lived down near Westport, Massachusetts. I was driving, and there was a woman that was looking for her dog. That was probably not lost, but wandering around. And I had the brilliant idea. I'm like, oh, there's a side adjacent parking lot to the beach. This might be where the dog went. Long story short, I went in there, got stuck in like a sand mixed with ice trap. I have a photo of it. It's ridiculous. I'm like, car stuck. I'm used to my Subaru Outback, which is just like a beast that can roll through the woods. But this is an old, this is my father's older Volvo, which like if it drives in snow, it just like, it can't move. And so I got trapped. Triple A came to tow me out, but they had this rule. I was 50 feet like off the road. So they were like, well, if we come in to get you, we'll get stuck too. So we can't help you. So I was like, what am I, what, so what am I going to do? And they're like, well, you could call this other towing company, but it's more expensive. But I was like, okay, fine. But I got to get out of here. Like, like I have to do something. I'm not going to just like live here tonight, you know, like <laughs> later and long story short, he got me out, but like, it was a long wait and it was like cold and dark. You had, your uh. own, you had your own society of the snow. I did have my own society of the snow. I was like starting to develop <laughs> a movie idea, and it was a terrible movie idea. So like, it was just me in the dark and the uh. snow coming up with an idea that was not good. So it was like mediocre. Uh. Model. I'm glad you had no avalanches. This is, this is why I'm a prepper. Everything in my trunk that I <laughs> oh need in case I get stuck in anywhere, like blankets and pillows. They need what I did have was that there's like a thing that you take out of the spare tire. You put a hook on the back of the car so they can pull it out. Like he had to come, he had to mm. pull the car from the behind, and it worked. But it was well, like just, it, at least it wasn't some lake, and you would have gone into the water or something. That's true. <laughs> if it was a lake, if it was a lake, and I drowned, I would I would have like a cool 1990 style one liner though before I die. I'd be like, oh man, I like water. But I didn't want to drown in it. <laughs> that, that wouldn't happen. Well, I'm sorry you had to go through this, Sam. And uh, later on this week, you'll uh, when we review uh, the notebook. There's a reason why Sam's not on that episode, and that's why. So. <laughs> Man, I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, and it's the reason why. Uh, never mind. Well, we'll leave it there. Anyway, so <laughs> we're we're, we're going to talk about uh, what we've been uh, doing and watching this week. B, why don't you enlighten us with anything that you've been uh, taking in? Yeah, sure. I finally finished my rewatch of The Sopranos, which means so did my partner, which means we don't have to get divorced. So, <laughs> listeners. Please let me know what you thought of the finale of The Sopranos. I know it's very contentious. You're about 15 um, minutes too late on this question, but yeah, go ahead. I know, but I feel like people will probably still have feelings. You know, that doesn't leave you. It's for life. That's what I learned about the mafia. It's for life. Mm -hmm. um, so watch that one. That was part of it or anything. 
<laughs> that's, that's what some hey, people yeah. say. So finish that. That was awesome. Went on like a little bit of a Cassavetes kids rabbit hole. So wait, for wait, listening- how, long did, how long did it take you to watch all, was it seven seasons of Sopranos or six seasons? Not long enough. Not long enough. It that should was, have taken longer. It was less than a month, right? You did all this? Six seasons. No, it wasn't. It was, it was a couple months. It no. was? Oh, I feel like yeah, you were, it was. All right. Sorry. No, okay. no, it was a few you months. Counteract yeah. that by now because that show is so incredible. You should, you should counteract it by watching a show of lesser quality. Might I recommend <laughs> Matlock with Andy Griffith? Go through the whole thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> we were thinking uh, yes, <laughs> a movie, uh, a show we both like is is The Wire, and that's kind of mm. that would that would I feel like gracefully exit us out of the Sopranos. You know, I've only seen season one of The Wire, and I don't know why I dropped it. I need to get back. I need to watch it the whole thing. I'll do a watch with you on that one. That's a great show. Someday. So for this is coming out before a notebook episode, but we we watched the notebook this week, which made me fall down a little bit of a rabbit hole for John Cassavetti's kids and their films and their legacies. I did I did end up rewatching John Q, which I saw years and years ago. And you know I saw that in the theater. Yeah, Denzel. It's not a bad time. I like John Q quite a lot. And then I also, and I hadn't seen this one before, Zoe Cassavetes made uh, an indie film, Broken English. And I thought that was really good. That's on Criterion. Um, So if you get a chance to check it out, that's, that's less, it's very not in the style of her brother's filmmaking. It's much more in the style of her father's. So it's, it's interesting. I thought it was really good. Um, and so folks should check that out. And then I rounded it all off with my favorite genre to get me out of all this drama sappy stuff with Kung Fu. <laughs> and I watched, I do, I, I love Kung Fu movies. They're my favorite. I'm ashamed that I haven't watched as many this year as I normally do. I need to get back on my Kung Fu, my Kung Fu Buary train. And I kicked it off strong this week. I watched a film on Tubi called Alienoid which I had not even heard of. Never heard of this. So, so my partner, Tom, he's got this this fascination with bad sci-fi movies. He just wants to watch B-sci-fi the way that people want to watch B-horror movies. And so we're going through those films for the long weekend. And this movie came up and it's a little kung fu, a little wire fu, a little sci-fi, a little comedy, a little fantasy and I have to say, it was not bad at all. It was too good. It didn't fit the bill. It's so good that there's already a sequel that I can't wait to see. This movie came out in 2022. It's It hits all the beats for me. It's super messy, and it, it gets a little long in the third act, but I did not care because I was just having such a blast with this wild movie that takes place over three time periods that converge at some point. And so we've got all these different characters dealing with different technologies from mysticism and cats that can jump out of fans and turn into fighters to aliens and robots that come down from other planets. So I thought it was amazing. Uh, and folks should, should check it out. If you like, I, Kung I, have, I have the trailer on in the background here. This movie looks insane. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's, wow. that's what I did this week. It looks like it has a pretty big budget. Yeah, I know. It was totally under the radar for me when it came out. Interesting. Okay. All right. Anything else to mention or is that it? Um, no, that's that's all it's worth mentioning, I think. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll say a few things that I saw this week. Um, this kind of ties into uh, last week's episode. Uh, we didn't have a bonus episode last week, but I watched... A, the, the Thing from Another World, and this was the original film from Howard Hawks. He's not the director. I, think, I mean, it's kind of weird if he's the director of Christian Nyby. Is there, mm-hmm. I, it, either him. It's one of those situations where, like, I think yeah, maybe, yeah. whatever. But anyway, so I, I rewatched this. It's the first adaptation of the 1938 novella from John W. Campbell, who goes there, titled The Thing from Another World. That's... Um, it's it's very of its time. If you expect, if as you would expect, this film being from 1951, it has a very different vibe coming out shortly after World War II. It, it's certainly tapping into the paranoia, the anxiety mm-hmm. surrounding the Cold War when the U.S. was freaking out about the spread of communism. The United yeah. States was also in the midst of the Korean War at the time. 
So story involves a group of scientists and military personnel discovering a crashed alien spacecraft in the Arctic and the frozen alien they find is a plant-based creature this time around. Now, I love classic horror films and many of the universal monster films I enjoy Uh a lot. But for some reason, I found this to be kind of a a dull film. I I think the Uh creature is very cliched and kind of lacking kind of the depth that I I, I think of like Frankenstein and Wolfman. I just like those a lot more. I do too. It's kind of a mild not recommend for me. But, you know, fans of the Carpenter film that are interested in seeing this, want to compare it, go for it. I think it's currently streaming on Tubi and the Roku channel. You can rent it on VOD. So if you're a completist, knock yourself out. (laughs) I also watched uh, a movie called Sun Coast, which just hit Hulu, streaming on Hulu right now. I was really excited to see this because this is a film that premiered at Sundance just last month. Hmm. This is a story about a teenage girl played by Nico Parker. I think is a revelation in this film. She, I've only known her from one other thing, and that was the show that came that from last year, The Last of Us. Ellie, I know you were a fan of that. Oh, yeah. She was in episode one. She played Pedro Pascal's daughter in that first episode. In this film, she stars alongside Laura Linney, who I think is amazing in this movie as kind of this overbearing mother. They're both caring for her brother, who is dying of a terminal illness. This film is just this really harrowing depiction of a family dealing with the stages of grief wrapped Mm -hmm. around uh, this coming of age story. It was a hard watch for me. I don't want to spoil the film for you or the listeners because I think it's worth watching, but I will say that, you know, grief can cause us to act in a lot of chaotic ways as we navigate, you know, those times. Mm -hmm. And this film definitely hit a nerve with me as I've found myself relating to a lot of the emotions of what it's like to go through, you know, similar situations. Mm-hmm. I'm being purposely vague. I know, but yeah. I think you this, said it's I mean, on Hulu. It's on Hulu right now. Just hit Hulu. Okay. It was at Sundance a month ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, That's Sun- such a oh, fast move from yeah. festival to it's called, it's called Sun Coast and Sun and um, Sundance awarded Nico Parker with the, it's, uh, the jury, the special jury award for breakthrough performance. Oh, cool. So again, yeah, so yeah, you Good can check time. it out Hulu right now. So yeah. Also, one and the one other thing I'll mention that I saw this week, you know, we did a recent review of the notebook. So I occasionally poke around to see what directors are out there that I haven't seen too many of their films. Okay. And it shocked me to discover that I have gone. 49 years of on this planet without seeing one single Ken Russell film. What? Yes. And what a coincidence that the Criterion channel is featuring Ken Russell right now with a whole slew of his films. That's awesome. So how and why I started with a 1991 film whore <laughs> is another discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I've justified it to myself as a counterpoint to our main review this week, The Notebook. <laughs> Whatever. So you've never seen Tommy? I haven't. I've seen, I mean, I've listened to the album like well, sure. a million times. I've never seen the movie Tommy. Nope. So horror. I'm dying for you to see Tommy. Is a very interesting film. Yeah. It's actually not very lauded. It's not supposed to be Ken Russell's one, one of his better films, but I decided I need something to counter at counterbalance what i just saw with the notebook wow. anyways wow. It what's stars something tr- that i know that he's making i don't i don't know this yeah, ken I don't, russell I don't, I don't i don't know if you don't know tommy i don't know that you it, i don't think he's your director no yeah, i don't know it stars not. Teresa russell who has no relation to ken russell in this satirical look at the day-to-day life of a los angeles prostitute at times this film is really funny but it's also very grim. It's not a great film, but I can't deny I was entertained. Ken Russell has famously stated in interviews that this film is a direct reaction to the film Pretty Woman. And I can totally oh see that. In fact, I think these two films would make a perfect double feature. And uh, have you seen this one? I have. I've seen okay. that. And I, but I think my favorite Ken Russell is The Layer of the White Worm, which you'll have to see too. Do any I famous that. actors work with this guy or what? 
I don't, I, I'm not the expert on him. I, I really don't yeah. know. I mean, I'm, I'm really intrigued. I'm happy to I, see Layer that. Layer the White Worm has like Capaldi in it and the rom-com guy, Hugh Grant. Mm. Hugh Grant's in it, so. I, I'm excited that there's like 10 films of his, his on Criterion. I, I'm going to try to get to a few more of them mm. while I can. But yeah. It looks creepy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it looks Nathan, like a though, pervert. I'm, like, well, yeah. Do you have For a recommendation, sure. B, where, what would be the next place I should go with Ken Russell? Ooh, well, Layer of the White Worm, if you haven't seen it. Or Tommy. Okay. You should do Tommy. Do should, Tommy. Okay. Just do okay. Tommy. You said something earlier, though, about like Universal movies, and you were comparing that to your sort of monster movie experience. Yeah. yeah. I also love Universal horror movies. I didn't know that we had this in common. Do you have a favorite? Does one jump to mind immediately? As I mean, like I love the original Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. I think That's those mine. are Bride of Frankenstein's like the best movie. Yeah, yeah. I love James That's Whale awesome. d- directed both of those. Yeah, uh, I think those are the those are my favorite peak peak Universal monster movies. Those two. I agree. I actually don't think Dracula is not that great. That great, not that great. The, the Wolfman the, is the one that I'm like. This is really not that great. Who is no, Universal? Wolfman. Wolfman is not that great. I, I but I think that they're fascinating films, and I I love everything Frankenstein. I I think that they're fun. They're they're still yeah. fun. Yeah. And the Invisible Man, like I just James Whale, I think is my mm-hmm. favorite. Yeah. 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 So that's what I'm watching. And the only thing I'll mention about what's going on with me is in a few days, I'm really excited to take some time off. Family and myself are going up to New Hampshire, and we're going to just get some some time up in the mountains, do some ice skating. I'm going to do some snowshoeing, and nice. I'm so excited. I haven't had that in almost a year now. We haven't, we haven't had a chance to go up there in a long time. So I'm really excited to do that. My daughter today also went snowboarding. My, nice. uh, my oh, youngest cool. daughter was snowboarding today. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're getting some, some winter time in. I love it. This week. Yeah. It's been great. They're on, yeah. it's vacation week for them. You mean yeah. if you have snow. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's yeah. Me out. Cause like we haven't had any snow. How about you, Ellie? Anything you want to share with us? I mean, I haven't watched anything. I just I've been judging some films for a festival, film festival. That's so cool. And so I have a lot of films to watch yet. And uh, are yeah, you enjoying this experience? I am. I'm learning a lot from being a judge, and um, such as everything I guess about filmmaking, which is the directing, the cinematography, the wardrobe, the sound, the music. I, I didn't know that sound and music were two different gen- different departments. <laughs> I was like, oh, sound is, you know, how the speech music, it's the actual, you know. I, I, and it's just been really great learning experience for me. Um, and as an actor, it only enhances my acting, I guess. Just learning, you know, because mm-hmm. when you get to judge a film, you you get to see other people's performances and you get to see, you know, what's lacking, wh- why it's not working, why is the performance is working or not working. And, you know, and I, I like, I'm probably one of those judges that is, will tell it like it is, but I'm very kind about it because you have to give people the, the credit for effort anyway. Mm. Because, you know, I when you do a film, and I've done, I've already done a short film and we did submit to some festivals. And, you know, I told you about it. It's called The Night Creeper. And mm-hmm. I wrote mm-hmm. it and then we I directed it and did the cinematography, not the cinematography, the editing. And... Boy, editing is the hardest part of the whole thing for me. It was the hardest thing. And when you do, and I feel like as a, all these filmmakers are putting in their film to festivals in the hopes that it gets accepted, but there's so many that you had to be very careful what you really put through, right? Because you mm-hmm. want to put the best films in there. And but yeah, I feel like you have to be kind because when somebody makes a film, whether it's it's not good or it's good or you know it's lacking things just the mere fact that they that you try something 
you put it mm. out there, I mm-hmm. think you should give yourself credit. Don't, 100%. Yeah. So I could, as a judge, I like to always give my feedback and always say, you know, this is what I see. This is why I'm not going to, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, like it or de- dislike it. But at the very end, I always try to give them a little bit of positive feedback saying, hey, but you know what, at least you know, you, you went for it, you know, Maybe how many next films, time. how many films, the, uh, these are, are these short films or features? There's, there's a mixture of everything. There's like from TV pilots to, oh, oh wow. To films, to feature shorts. It can go from a one minute one to like a whole hour and a half, two hours. Wow. Yeah. The longest I've had was like an hour. Yeah. Like an hour of a feature. And then there's documentaries too, so it's a, it's a whole mix of things. Ellie. It's like you're doing a real life version of our vault. Like you're, <laughs> you're kind yeah. of. Doing that. You know yeah. what, B? That's actually that is true because I had to put it into the vault or not. Put yeah. It into the vault. Yeah. And, These are like your training grounds. On and the I some films that I, you know, I there's some really good films that are worthy of putting even a word. Yeah. I were worthy performances, wow. you know. And so I, uh, but it's been a really nice um, experience. I, I did work in a festival before. This is like a, back in 2017. I, I also did the same thing with the Boston International Film Festival. Mm-hmm. I was part of the committee that would pick the films for the film mm-hmm. festival. And that, that's and, cool too. Yeah, that was really cool. And I got to go to the premiere of the, the opening red carpet event and i met a director who oh my god his name is gray something gray oh, what's his name he, is he the transformers director oh um, I don't know. gray something his name his last name is gray a, they're, they're, i know um i google gray, gray transformer and james I'm just james toys. gray his name is james yeah. gray yeah he's a, he's, a, yeah. he's a studio director yeah yeah, yeah so he's so funny because he actually that that year he had put he had made a film about the amazons and and it was like the the indigenous people there it's really great film and you know at the end you ask you have the q and a and I kept asking questions. He would like point out to me and I would ask questions. And after the Q&A was over, I'm walking through the hallway. I guess he remembered. He goes, you're the one that's always asking questions. What's your name? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm Ellie. <laughs> and, he, and he like took pictures with me at the event. Uh, and, oh, cool. and that was, was, that I think was it was the movie, cool. the, the Lost City of Z. That the Lost, was, yeah. yes, that's the mm-hmm. movie. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't think that movie did well for him but i really liked it i liked that movie that was an interesting movie that was a very interesting movie and i i got to meet him and he's such a nice guy you know so yeah Yeah. everything about that movie was uniquely and interestingly directed there wasn't like a single like standard like just boring scene in it it was the whole movie was strange but in a kind of a good way yeah yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And I just, I, I actually enjoyed it. I don't know why it didn't go too far, right? Because I don't remember oh. it being. Happens all the time. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. marketing or word of mouth. Just or doesn't people, pick up. Maybe, yeah. 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 But, but, but yeah, so I, I enjoyed, so I had that back in 2017 and then, and then this I'm doing now, but I, I'm enjoying the, the journey. So, yeah. Good. All right. Anything else, or is, is that it for your for your week? No, I mean I've been auditioning all week, actually, mm-hmm. and I I'm just I'm also studying with a new acting coach. I oh, cool. love I love him. He's he's been in so many movies, and he's in Canada. But he he back in the eighties he had his own theater company, and 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 he won. What what's the theater awards? Emmys? No. Tony's. Tony's. Oh, oh is that uh, is Tony's. that? Is that a Tony or he won an Emmy? One of the I think it was an Emmy. Emmys I don't know. TV. Emmys TV. TV. Tony's definitely stage. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He won some. I don't know. But he. he what's his name? The, um, 
Jeffrey, we'll so, Jeffrey something. That, that guy. Forget, that guy. I, I forgot. He's like, I just met him. He's the like, name is just... Plutarch Ogilbert Thorne. <laughs> <laughs> but what I like about him, which I find really cool because it's something, you know, when you get, they say when you have an acting coach that you connect with and you like stick with them, right? I have many acting coaches since I started my acting career on here in Boston and then uh, New York and uh, LA and everywhere. And I even had a coach from my own country, El Salvador. <laughs> so, but this guy, I'm telling you, I studied the method. I studied Stanislavski, Stanislavski, can I say, Stanislavski, Meissner, Stella Adler with Larry Moss, I love Larry Moss. He's my number one. Um, but this guy uses none of those methods. And the way he teaches acting, it's like so real. And I think this is going to be a game changer for me in my acting. So I can't wait to see where it goes. So I'm excited. That's awesome. Very cool. Hell yeah. 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 So let's see. So that's about it. Okay. All right. This is what we're going to do now. Hey, Sam. Gonna, we, uh, yeah, what about Sam? I, oh. I, can I, is, it, is it okay if I... Uh, I'll be quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I had a pretty good week. I just wanted to say that uh, on a whim, I didn't know of the existence of this movie beforehand. Like 10 minutes before, I just happened to be in Providence Place Mall. I was running errands. And I was like, I just, I have not sat down in a movie theater for a while. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. This is where projects come to life. Our showrooms are designed to inspire with the latest products from top brands, curated in an inviting, hands-on environment, and a team of industry experts to support your project. We'll be there to make sure everything goes as planned, from product selection to delivery coordination. At Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery, your project is our priority. Schedule your showroom consultation and see more from brands like Monogram at build.com slash Ferguson. I just want to go to the cinema and just just get out of my house and like escape my mind for a minute. So I was just looking on the posters on the wall and there was a movie called land of bad that looked like mildly actiony. And I was like, ah, uh, I don't know. This, this could be, could be one of those like terrible, like February dumping ground releases where it's just like this mediocre movie that comes out in the middle of the winter. But I Googled a review and what sold me, I wish I could remember the reviewer's name because the guy gave it a B. He liked it and said it reminded him of 1990s mid-tier action movies. Like Breakdown. Hell and yes. And I was like, I know exactly what he's talking about. I think I'm going to enjoy this. Long story short, it is a B movie. It's nothing special, but it was surprisingly suspenseful. Russell Crowe is wildly entertaining <laughs> as an angry, like drone pilot he's not in a he's not actually like in a drone he's he's the guy who's at the army base who's overseeing a mission from his computer and he is working with some real like assholes that don't know what they're doing but he does so he's guiding liam hensworth through the jungle and it's a little movie it's nothing special but i thought the suspense was really good there was no like it was not CGI. The the drones looked real. The action in the jungle was great. There was like so, so I just really, really enjoyed it, and I liked the climax, and so I had a fun time with that. And then I'll end by saying, most of the rest of the week was was errands, but I had a really good conversation with a friend of mine who's also like a producer, and it was a really really helpful quality conversation because I've been really thinking about trying to come up with a business plan recently and where am I going to go next and what am I doing? And in the past I've made a couple of short films, but I have a tendency to just create things because I have a vision for it, but I never think of what the next step is. And so preemptively I've been working with him a little bit discussing the next like possible short 
and he's really helpful at like helping craft a possible business plan and some like marketing ideas and just like thinking long term because he's in a similar boat as me. So it was a really productive, inspiring conversation and a highlight for me this week because when I can bounce off someone else and as like a soundboard, it, it gives me a way in and I can like three dimensionalize ideas in my head as opposed to just like spinning around in the, in the dark, like a top going like, what do I do? Next? <laughs> so that was, that was really helpful as I, as I'll be going back to LA pretty soon. That, so I just, that was a highlight. So that and an action movie made it a halfway decent. Oh, week. Okay. Um, That's a pretty good week. It's great yeah, to hear. About just, just, just progress because I'm, I like progress is good because yeah, Progress is needed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm great to hear that. I haven't been to the theater in weeks and weeks now. And yeah. I don't know. I'm going to try to get out and probably won't be for a few more weeks. I know uh, Drive Away Dolls comes out uh, I can't I think wait this for weekend. That. And that's one of my most anticipated movies. I don't know. I think I probably, I don't know if it's going to be screening locally though. I don't know if it's going to be like maybe one like Coolidge Corner or something. Mm. Probably. I'm an insane person. I, did go see... I, haven't done it yet, but I am thinking of changing my flight because the Providence place IMAX is so good for Dune. And there's, there's all these small yes. screens in LA. I'm like, am I going to like change a flight like a maniac just to see a movie? And the answer wow. is maybe. 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 Yeah. I'm a Speaking of theater, I did go see Argyle this week. I forgot to mention it because oh, that's yeah. how good Argyle was. <laughs> I wanted it was to. just, yeah. it was pretty fun. I think people are who are shitting on it just got to lighten up a little bit. I don't think it's trying to be like the next best thing. It's, it's a pretty good Matthew Vaughn movie. It's fine. But man, is it just good to be in the theater again. It's just been a few weeks for me. I think it may be, nah, I can't be my first movie of the year, but it's close. Just like I, I was saying this to my dad, just like my father, for some reason, sitting in a movie theater is one of the few places where we can like relax, like yeah. being in a movie theater where like you, you made the commitment, yeah. you bought your ticket, you know, you're going to be there. It's almost like you are allowed to mentally check out mm -hmm. you made that like allocation of time. And it's different from watching something at home. So I just love being in the theater and. You know, I will say that Providence Place, great sound and picture, but their seats, like it's, they haven't updated it. So like the, the seat is small and the cup holder was like slanted. Luckily I had like the road to myself. So I took over like three seats and like made myself <laughs> and stuff. I was like, rrr, 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 rrr. this is my territory. <laughs> oh, here's a fun fact. Pedro Pascal and I, we learn lines the same exact way, by the way. Nice. Yep. We, yep. I just learned that he just posted in his Instagram how he learns his lines. And uh, I was like, what? That's Is that what learned. you do while we're podcasting? You you peruse Pedro Pascal's blog? I am a fan of Pedro. <laughs> I want to be in a movie with Pedro. Okay. You could take uh, over for Pedro and the Mandalorian. Just put on the costume and the helmet no. and they'll just dub his voice. No one would know. That is I think true. I think for the next season, Mandalorian, like he's not even in it. They're just gonna have some stand-in, right? He's not. Oh, man. I just picture him like he comes into the studio and they're like, "This." He's like, "Okay, okay, twenty minutes. This is the way." Grogu, where are you? This is the way. He's a, he's a bit too tall. They got it. They learned. I'm a little too short for that. Yeah, I'm afraid. <laughs> Sir, what? Aren't either one of these any good? I don't watch movies. Well, have you heard anything about either one of them? I find it's best to stay out of other people's affairs. You mean you haven't heard anybody say anything about either one of these? Nope. Well, what about these two? Oh, well, they suck. <laughs> so I want to, because I want to wrap this up soon, because it's getting late, is I want to, we're going to bring back a version of a segment that we used to have on the main show. We used to have a, something called Recommendation Shelf. And what we're going to be doing is bringing it back on our bonus episodes. And here's how we're framing this. Um, these bonus shows, even though you're hearing this before our main review, we actually record these after we record our review. So like, you're going to hear our review of The Notebook in four days from now. However, we just re recorded our Notebook review. But what, what this is going to be, I'm calling this movie prep. So if you want to watch mm -hmm. Notebook, you like the Notebook, we are going to have a recommendation 
for a film. If you like the notebook that we think would be a good companion piece to it, something else you might like to prepare for films like the notebook so this is what we're gonna call it. and i don't have any foley for this or any music i may add that in at a later date a little jingle i like my jingles for the show but i like your jingles too i know i might work on it. maybe you guys can think of something you know maybe maybe, maybe a listener will write us jingle i want i want a listener to compose a, a, a some jingles for us that'd be kind of cool you know anyway so this is what we're doing and there's again here's here's how this works there's no particular theme there's no genre this is wide open so to everybody here and anybody no we're not all obligated to participate in this but for instance the notebook if you think a listener would like the notebook suggest another movie that could accompany it all right leave it at that you know whether it's another romantic comedy whether it's another movie that is about about Alzheimer's or another movie that has Ryan Gosling or Rachel McAdams in it. it could be anything. It's wide open. So anybody here want to begin? Yeah. You know, there is one, but you guys are going to have to help me with the title. It's, it's cheesy and it's not great. And, and I don't quite know if it applies, but it was with Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock, the lake house, the lake house. That's such a good call. I, it, I just like that. Yeah. I just like the, the, almost sci-fi element of like them putting stuff in the mailbox. I just, the thing about that movie is it's not like a great film, but it's in the similar category, but I came out of that movie feeling good. Like I just, Mm -hmm. the the movie made me feel, so I would recommend the lake house. I, I, I think it's good. I think it's underrated. It gets like, it gets shafted. I think people like for some reason hate on that movie. Mm -hmm. Maybe because Keanu is, I don't think Keanu's good in that movie, but I like the movie. Yeah, I like the movie too. I just was in the mood for it. Like, I think it's like it came out 2006, but I saw it in the theater. Yeah. Yeah, those sort of early aughts, glossy romance, rom-com. I, yeah, they just have that certain, I don't know if it's the lighting or the softness. There's something about them. Just it's a lot out. better than, it's better than the one with, with Julianne Moore and Pierce Brosnan, where they're both lawyers. Came out in 2004 and like, they meet each other in a court case and they have chemistry immediately. And the laws no- of attraction. That's it. Yeah. And like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> the immediate, but they have chemistry immediately. And so there's nowhere for the story to go. So basically they meet each other and they're happy. And you're like, well, there was no arc there. And then they go to Ireland mm-hmm. and I was disappointed in their adventure. Cause I wanted to see more establishing shots, but it's been like 20 years since I saw the film, but they just like, show up at some house it's like we're in ireland now i'm like you didn't go to ireland Burr. <laughs> <laughs> they did i don't know i don't trust me on that my memory is faded i just remember feeling underwhelmed with that film this was at a time in college when i literally saw everything that came out every week just mm-hmm. for the hell of it nice. well if anyone out there wants to follow sam's recommendation and watch the lake house i think it's only available on vod or go to your library and find it on DVD or Blu-ray or some other means. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, I think it's a good pick, Sam. I, I do like the lake house. A solid. Yeah. Enjoy. Well, All right. um, I had to make a sound yeah. for what I think of the lake house. It's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have one, Nate, that I think is also pretty good. If you, you want. You can, you can take the one that we were fighting over if you want. I have another pick. I'm taking it. Oh, it's so mine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so mine. I, I got there first. So sorry. It's a great romance. If, you, if you're if you like Nathan, well, I won't spoil Nathan's review, but <laughs> if, you, if you want something with a lot of depth to it, I would say you should check out Richard Linklater's The Before Trilogy. Ooh. I think mm-hmm. that is... Mm-hmm a great example of just this indelible, delicate romance that happens pretty instantaneously with two people, in this case, Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy, that have incredible chemistry. And it is just, its if you haven't seen it, the first one before sunrise, I mean, the 90s, it takes place over the course of one day. And it's just these two people falling madly in love with each other over one day on a trip and they, they have a meet cue and the whole thing. And it's really wonderful to watch. What's your favorite three? I always just watch them together. 
So for me, I just, I always watch them together. But I think the first is the the one that I love the most. Um, I like them. I like them all. I really, I really do. That they're is, all so different. It's so. And it's yeah, yeah. They are. They're so different. And for viewers, the sequels didn't come out until I think like ten years later. So you really get to see yeah, 94 2004 and i think 2011 or something yeah, like that there's it, some good there, time and, and there's gonna be more i think link later said that the story is not over and hawk said that. i yeah i love the i love hawk and link later together they can make movies forever yeah 100 yeah. this all is right. this is not the vibe of the notebook at all but no. if you want really good romance really good love stories and you want to just sort of like fall in love with love and fall in love with the chemistry of actors on screen. I think this is a great pick. Yeah. That's great. There's a scene in that, which this this isn't necessarily like a comedy comedy, but there's a scene in this that I laugh at. I love so much. And it's when Ethan Hawks, who plays Jesse and Celine, they are having this like pretend phone call. Yes. Remember and like and it, it's it's really funny like and they're like and they're just like you know I met this guy and you know I don't really know where it's gonna go or something like that and it's it's I get such a kick it's out so of that sweet yeah, yeah it is I I love uh, that movie I've seen that movie probably like six or seven times in my life and it, I oh. I just enjoy it to the nth every single time I see it I I love that film B I am so sorry I have to give you a non sequitur shout out right now because remember how on the Google account thing when you were saying that that uh, check my <laughs> You know, yes. file. I checked it on this phone. It's a different picture because I have two Google accounts. That's what it is. So all that stuff is saved. So like the world is great. And I'm so sorry for the audience to take you off track. <laughs> no, they have no, no idea what we're talking about. Sam's vaguely <laughs> referenced technological problems may have just solved themselves. Yeah. Just know that an yeah. average overweight white American male is happy. And that should make you happy. <laughs> just kidding. <Stop. laughs> All right, I, I'll, I'll go. I'll, yeah. I'll go. I'll go next. I'm just going to jump in. Since B stole my thunder, this my week. thunder first, Nathan. My pick is Lost in Translation. From, That's a great uh, pick. I think this film endures like no other. I I love this film because, you know, as listeners will hear in in the upcoming episode, I'm not the hugest fan of a certain type of romance movie no nor, nor am i Aww. head over heels for a lot of rom-coms but the 2003 film was in translation you know directed by sofia coppola is a very unconventional romance movie because it brings two characters together who are our lost souls in a foreign place the connection mm-hmm. they have isn't sexual or, or really romantic in a traditional sense, but the connection they do spark is about as intimate as you'll see in cinema. You got Scarlett Johansson and Bill Murray in the main roles. The film takes place in Tokyo. And I know it's such a cliche to say like that, you know, the city plays a character, but the city plays a character. The city totally plays a character. (laughs) Yeah, I know. And I, I don't like usually saying that, but this movie, it's true. Murray plays an actor who is on assignment to film a whiskey commercial, but he's, he's this, he's jaded and, and, in his life he takes no pleasure in his fame and recognition his connection Mm -hmm. with johansson's character who plays charlotte reinvigorates him charlotte is this young newlywed and is tagging along as her husband is on his own i think like press tour in tokyo or something like that and she's crippled with the uncertainty that perhaps she's made the wrong decision in marrying her husband and these two lost souls come together and and what I feel is one of the most romantic stories I've ever seen on screen. And the chemistry yeah. between them is just scorching. And there's nothing sexual at all about it. And I I just get goosebumps watching this movie. This is my kind of romance. And of course, what can I say about the ending? That that moment where they have that 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 whisper, we will never know what is said in that. I I adore this film. This is the second. Sophia Coppola movie that I've recommended on this podcast. I I think she's an incredible filmmaker. I, I if mm-hmm. anyone has not seen this movie, this is an incredible film. Go I've seen this. And this really, is available was, only on VOD, I think, right now. That was a great movie, and I I have not seen it in a long time. But I remember a hilarious scene where Bill Murray is doing multiple takes. <laughs> 
yes. on a commercial and he's like, and he like gets into it. And I just was, it was a good scene. I, this, and there's also a moment where he says like the, well, the whiskey works, you know, or something like that. You know? <laughs> he's so good in it. And I feel so bad that he did not win the the Oscar that year. Cause that yeah. was his shot. This, that was his shot. a shot. Great movie. Yeah. I, and this is, even if you're not a huge Sofia Coppola fan, cause I'm not her biggest fan, but I think this like stands out above. This might be my favorite movie of hers. Mm. Mm. This, I, so I, also, I also love Vir- Vir- Virgin Suicides was my other, this, That's, I'm not I, I do it. I do love that movie. That was, was my, fir- that was episode one's fir- recommendation. My first oh boy. episode. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking with someone. I think, I think Lost in Translation came out in 2003. Yeah. And I was 22. And at Thanksgiving, I was talking with someone about it and they were like, Sam, you're only 22. You cannot possibly understand what it means to connect to another person. You can't appreciate it. <laughs> Like, oh, I appreciate wow. it. I appreciate it. But now that I'm 42, it's like I get their point more. But I still appreciated that movie at 20. You did I'm too yeah. young to understand that movie. So if that person ever listens to this, f you, stranger. <laughs> Show them. Yeah. All right. yeah. Um, all hey, right. in Ottoman New York, huh? Eh? Eh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Ellie. Ellie. Ellie, do you have something? Oh my goodness. Light in the book. Or no. or anything or something. Anything. There's do you have anyone like, like movies based on have. books or there's nothing like the notebook, but I mean it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be like the notebook. I mean I love the age of Adeline. P.S. I love you. I mean, P.S. I love you. It's a good slow, choice slow for this one. All right. It's just la, one, la, one la, thing. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, how do you pick? But okay, P.S. I'll stick with P.S. I love you. Because, you know, again, it's one of my favorite actresses. And I can never say her last name. Swank. Yeah. I, how do you say her last name? Swank. Swank? Yeah, mm-hmm. Swank. Wow. And then, oh, that gorgeous man. Rod Butler, baby. Who? Gerard Butler. Oh, yes. Hello. The gorgeous man. I will watch anything that he does. Even if he sucks, the movie sucks. Whatever. I'll still watch it. Yeah, it's a, basically... Because he did a lot of sucky movies. Yeah. <laughs> did, he do, did he do many movies like this? Yeah. No. This no. was against type for him a little bit. But he was He's, sort of a pretty boy at the time. Yeah, Yeah, he was a pretty boy at the time. But also, but he's done some movies about one that I just watched where his wife gets kidnapped and, but it's more Mm -hmm. like an action film. I just recently watched another one. It was really good. It was in Netflix, actually. Just recently, I watched that one and he's like a a very apocalyptic movie and his wife and kids are Geostorm. No, it's not Geostorm. <laughs> but it's kind of like the Geostorm, but it's not that one. I forget which one it is. In any case, P.S. I love you. I really loved this movie back when I saw it. It's just the love story is about how, he, you know, she falls in love with him and they get married and then he passes away tragically. And um, he basically, she, he knew that she was going to have a hard time grieving mm. for his death. So he basically leaves a letter letters yeah. to her to ease her yeah. grief and uh, and then eventually she meets the other guy dean something he was in the walking dead i forget his name i don't, I don't remember I, I remember this movie yeah yeah it's a yeah. good movie it was good all right i think it's a good pick all right okay the world the world is mine all my google apps they're all back all the stars <laughs> All the hearts, yeah. all mine. The planet is back. <laughs> what the heck? I mean, I mean, you're geez. too many, man. <laughs> you guys, I, 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 it's, I, I hate, I'm not trying to be that like hijacker guy. I'm just saying that, like, because I figured this out, I now I will sleep peacefully and dream of like. Tim Ladris, which is another word for Rivendell, which is just a place of beauty in the land of Middle Earth. Oh, was it 2020 Greenland? That's the name of the movie. I love that movie. Mm. Did you watch Greenland? Yeah. Yeah, Scary movie. Would you ride Butler? Yeah. Love that movie. Really? 
yeah, it's in 2020. I enjoyed it. it, it I enjoyed it. I, I, that was one of those movies that I bumped into by accident and I watched the first 10 minutes and then I that's just sat. How I, that's oh. how I watched it too, because by accident. And now it's not Geostorm. <laughs> I just watched Hunter Killer with Gerard Butler. Hunter and that Killer. is not good. But <laughs> he is in it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I just, I just, I always, I always got Green Zone and Greenberg mixed up because they came out the same year and they're very mm. different movies. As long as you don't get them mixed up with the Green Book. <laughs> killer because there's like two R's in it, like Hunter, Killer. It sounds like a Mark Wahlberg movie. It's like mm. Mark Wahlberg hanging out. It's like, what are you working on? Hunter, Killer? And then he says to Ben Affleck, like, what are you working on? Runner, Runner. Something in this field <laughs> could be releasing the chemical. In- <laughs> it, uh- is is aggressively not for me that movie that's all right it's a submarine movie i know that feeling when you encounter something that is aggressively not for you and you can like you want to be on board but it like it it just like goes the wrong way and you're like oh no yeah (laughs) yeah at some point i was just like this this movie is just on and i will be paying zero more attention to it Right. Come on, the, the Vanishing was really good, though. Yeah, he makes good movies, but he makes a lot of bad movies. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. I like him. You're talking about Gerard Butler. Yeah, yeah. I like him as an actor. I just, I agree that some of the movie he's is in are like poor action fare that is like not so yeah. great. He's just working. Yeah. He's working. working. You know, hey. he's working. God, I don't know what he's playing. <laughs> Do you want to see Plane? I no, see plane. I did not see it. How was I it? I want to see it. You saw it? It was, it was fine. I can't, fine. I can't wait for the sequel, Boat. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was surprised at how, like, when I went to the theater on Friday, I, I, I there's so many releases that I hadn't paid attention to. I was, like, look, reading down the list yeah. of them playing, and some of them I was like, what the hell is that? I've never. I'm heard- excited for the Fall Guy, new Ryan Gosling joint. Yeah, that could be good. Yeah. That could be fun. I am looking forward to that. Yeah. By the way, B, I think you're right about Dune Two gonna be box office bonanza. It's be huge. Just it's like it's not the best barometer, but I'm like looking at a couple of theaters of where to go, like trying to get seats, and they're just like all the seats are sold. So I'm like yeah. already. I want to see it. Yeah, and the tickets are already on sale. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I think I think it will be. Yeah, uh, those, be those, those, kid, those kids are about to make a ton of money. Those kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I never I, get, I never I buy tickets in advance, but I don't know. The average day of like Zendaya or like Timothy Chalamet is like they they must just be so active and mo- like they you know what I'm saying like I just yeah I mean, their days must be whirlwinds like worldwide press tours and stuff like that. I can't even imagine it. I can yeah. imagine it. I just don't live it, so I don't know what it's like. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. No. yeah. <laughs> All right. She's a great. Should we wrap it up? Girl. Sure. All right. Let's, 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 let's wrap it up it. and uh, tune yeah. in for our episode uh, next Monday of our review of the Notebook. And uh, thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. Woo-hoo. All right. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. This is where projects come to life. Our showrooms are designed to inspire with the latest products from top brands, curated in an inviting, hands-on environment, and a team of industry experts to support your project. We'll be there to make sure everything goes as planned, from product selection to delivery coordination. At Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery, your project is our priority. Schedule your showroom consultation and see more from brands like Monogram, at build.com slash Ferguson.